Hi everyone, it's so great to be here with you on Heal with Kelly. Um, I'm at the Eco Farm <coughs> and um, I'm so great that you're all um, showing up with me. So thank you for showing up today. <coughs> Give a little introduction. I am Deanne Portia and I'm a holistic health and wellness practitioner utilizing the principles and practice of mind-body medicine, spiritual um, s spiritual perspective, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, communication skills to help reduce stress and support immune function. And I'm so grateful to be featured in HEAL documentary um, produced by Kelly Noonan Gores. Thank you, Kelly, again, and Adam Schomer. And um, so wonderful you know the movie came out in 2017 and you see me working with my advanced stage cancer client who was diagnosed with stage 4 colorectal cancer in 2013 and remains cancer free which is such a wonderful miracle and um, you know there's all sorts of wonderful names um, notable names it's more notable than me but um, Anyway, I'm alongside those great names. So, hey guys, thanks. Who's coming in from Connecticut? Wow, so many people. <laughs> That's so great. So, hi everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm broadcasting live from the Eco Farm. And I'm right now, you may hear roosters in the background, which is really fun. Um, I'm surrounded by green grass, beautiful trees. I'm actually sitting in the oak savanna right now which is about two two acres three acres something like that of beautiful heritage oaks one of the trees behind me was literally split in half um, during a big ice storm that hit this area very hard in january but now it's springtime actually now it's summertime and um everything's kind of back to normal still lots of work because there's always lots of work on an eco farm and I just picked some of this beautiful penny royal mm, it smells like mint in fact another name for it is called mountain mint <laughs> oh gosh Canada Virginia oh thank you so much for joining everybody <laughs> so great to have you here um, before I get started I'll tell a little bit more about the eco farm um, so you know I do holistic health and wellness, and as an extension of my healing practice, I'm creating the Portia Holistic Eco Farm and Wildlife Sanctuary in Springfield, Oregon. Our family has uh, 46 acres that are beautiful with five different ecosystems on the property. So we've got uh, about 15 or 20 acres of flat pasture land for regenerative farming. And, um, and then about two or three acres of beautiful heritage oak savanna. We've got oaks here that are 150, 200 years old, maybe even older, which is great. Um, we also have about six acres of woodland and riparian areas. And then way in the back, there's another, I don't know, I think 10 or 15 acres of wetland prairie with beavers. Yay! <laughs> Love the beavers. Hey, thanks. Oh, Long Island, New York. Hey, everybody. I can't keep up with everyone, but thank you so much for, you know, checking in and logging in. So, Mountain Mitt. Beautiful. Also, I want to share with you, I picked these beautiful blackberries. Summertime is the time for blackberries, and they are so delicious. My fingers are probably still purple. Um, but I've been picking lots of blackberries up here. It's great. So, um, healing. Yeah. Um, I'm so uh, blessed to be able to do the work that I'm doing. I've been doing it for 24 years. And I can't imagine ever retiring. Um, the Eco Farm is going to be an extension of my wellness practice. And at some point, I will be um, offering some small kind of camping retreats up here to do wellness work. Um, I still see, you know, 
people remotely through Zoom. That's how I see all my clients. I work with thousands of people from all over the world, uh, with all from all cultures and backgrounds and religious or spiritual traditions. And um, the work is really amazing. I can't imagine ever retiring from this work because it's so rewarding. <laughs> um, and eventually, uh, there will be some events up here for people to come to. And it'll be getting connected to nature because the mission statement for this eco farm is to create a place um, for community, a place for um, people to come and learn and be educated about regenerative farming. We're going to have farmers that are living on the property doing regenerative farming, which means that we rotate different types of animals and grow different crops, cover crops to naturally build up the microbiome of the soil here. Um, so um, a place and study or a place for the practice, study and education of regenerative farming, um, conservation of the five ecosystems that we have on the property and human health and wellness through nature and living in right relationship with Mother Earth with all the advances in AI technology, robotics that are gonna be soon taking over so many jobs, people would be without work, be, I imagine there's gonna be a period of not knowing one's value as robots take over more and more. And then also laboratory grown foods, um, which is really concerning for me. I, when I was traveling to um, Bali over the Christmas holiday last year, I was sat next to a um, science-based guy. He's, um, I think, a professor out of uh, Florida University in some discipline, biology. And we were talking about health and wellness and the eco-farm and, and his work. And a colleague of his work who is someone that is a molecular biologist who takes apart all the different elements of the molecules that, you know, go into making food. And of course, this is being done right now in laboratories. They're cloning animals and cloning beef as a solution for um, climate change, as a solution for deforestation and cutting down trees. Um, they think that this is a solution for, um, you know, a healthier solution to feed humanity. But it's not. Something in my gut and soul tells me that there are a slew of untold problems down the line when there's accumulated toxic stress from laboratory grown foods. We have no idea what that accumulated um, effect is going to have on the body. So I, you know, I'm creating this eco farm to um, join a movement that is, you know, happening across the United States and elsewhere to remain connected to the land, um, have real food that is grown in real soil, and um, that has no, you know, artificial fertilizers, but, but is built up through, naturally through, you know, different animals and crops, and because what we eat is what you know, manifests in our body, so much of it. What we eat as well as, um, you know, what we feed our mind. And the work that I do of, you know, mind-body medicine and spiritual practices is my little piece of the puzzle to a holistic approach to health and wellness. Um, blessed to work with so many people remotely on Zoom, which is so great. Had another great session this afternoon with a client of mine in New York, and we were um, talking about uh, well, something that she was going through was a kind of inner conflicts of whether to, you know, follow these goals that she had set for herself 20 years ago, um, or maybe 10 it was 10 years ago, yeah, because she's a young woman, so. Um, setting goals for herself and, and really, um, you know, being, uh, chasing after her goals with uh, notoriety and entertainment and 
uh, Hollywood and all of that and uh, achieving some success and at the possible expense of some other parts of her life. And um, so we were talking about uh, one of the nine traps of unconscious loving, which is one of the tools that I teach my clients in one of the communication tools that I teach. So in addition to holistic stress reduction, um, I teach communication skills for, uh, to help reduce stress because so much of our mental emotional stress is through our relationships and our closest relationships. So, and communication is a really important part of that. So, um, I have uh, two tools that I help my clients learn these skills. One is called the Nine Traps of Unconscious Loving. And the Nine Traps of Unconscious Loving are based on the, um, the principles of health and wellness and living consciously. And they are nine traps of miscommunication that people fall into unknowingly, just out of habit. And because that's kind of what they were modeled as kids growing up. Um, to give you an example, trap number one is expecting the other person to be a mind reader. So, unless you are a clear, complete, honest communicator and in a manner that can be received by the other person, so they're not put on the defensive, because that just takes you in a spiral down, um, then your expectations of them are not going to be met. You're going to be left feeling hurt, disappointed, sad. Um, maybe that hurt and disappointment turns into deeper feelings of resentment and anger and each of those emotions leave a little black mark in the heart, another little black mark in the mind, and over time those black marks accumulate until you finally want to call the relationship quits. So you pack your bags and you leave. And eventually you will find another relationship. And once you get through that honeymoon phase, what happens is that suitcase comes out with all those little black marks and now old patterns repeat over again uh, with a new person, a new environment and situation, but the underlying uh, miscommunications and hurts from the past resurface and play out again in your next relationship. So that's an example of the nine traps of unconscious loving. The trap number seven was what I was talking about with my client this afternoon and that is power struggles between the heart and the mind, right? So the mind or the ego is, is, um, is really fueled by your uh, unconscious and your subconscious that believes that your heart is much too weak to allow it to take you know, rule of your life. But um, those, the simplest principle to health and wellness and living consciously is really to let your heart lead the way while heeding the wisdom that you've learned along the way. So let your heart lead the way while heeding the wisdom of your mind that you've learned along the way. And um, of course, the mind thinks you're heart is much too weak to be put in charge of that and usually that's because um, the heart has gone through a lot of hurts and disappointments so and usually stemming from early childhood so you know by the time the adult reaches I don't know 30 years of age um, it's like every hurt and disappointment that has been experienced in early childhood gets imprinted in the subconscious mind and becomes the default program for how the adult goes about life. So by the time you reach age 30 or so, um, that default program is really in charge, which means that 95% of your adult um, decisions are really being made by the experiential perspective of a child. And only 5% of our decisions are made consciously and from the heart. Because most of the time we're too busy in our lives, uh, we've got so much going on in our mind and in our external material world that 
we're just reacting um, emotionally and, and reacting to things that come up in this in life rather than mindfully reflecting and responding so conflicts and power struggles between the heart and the mind so today um, I'd like to lead you through a little guided meditation and um, I'm gonna try and uh, access that kind of authentic heartfelt place inside yourself and see what your heart wants. Oh, looks like we were paused for a second. Anyway, um, before we do that, um, could someone or just kind of give me some feedback and let me know if anyone is resonating with this kind of inner power struggles between heart and mind inside your own self. Um, does anyone can relate to that one? I see a lot of waves and yeah, oh hearts, okay. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to write something down in the chat. Um, so yeah, so when between the cars. <laughs> yeah, so that's hi Megan. Um, definitely. So um, let's do a um, let's do a little closed eye meditation today, and um, I'm sitting outside intentionally too because whenever I meditate back home in Topanga um, or here, I always go outside and find a beautiful place in nature, grounding my feet uh, on the ground, uh, breathing in the fresh air, hearing. And listening to the sounds of nature that show up. Um, these are the most powerful meditations that I have. I find that when I sit indoors, I feel very closed in. Um, but sometimes people live in climates that you can't comfortably sit outside. So uh, when that is the case, um, I have my clients create a special space in their home. Um, maybe it's near a window. Uh, where they can, even if their eyes are closed, they know that that window is there. They can see it in their mind's eye and call in the beauty of that nature that's outside. Um, so that's uh, what you can do if the weather doesn't allow you to actually sit outside. So, <clears throat> so in this little exercise, I need to put my blackberries down so I don't squish them. Um, okay. So I want you to sit up straight, wherever you are right now. And you'd want to sit on the coccyx, kind of those bones on your butt. And uh, you don't want to be bent at the waist or crouched over. So sit up straight. If you're sitting in a chair with armrest, then place your arms not on the armrest, but in your lap with palms facing up pulling the shoulders back, so opening up the chest cavity, right? And then closing your eyes and taking a deep breath in through your nose. And exhale fully and completely through the relaxed open mouth. And again, inhaling fully and completely through the nose, allowing the lungs to expand to 80% capacity, holding briefly at the top and then exhaling fully and completely through the relaxed open mouth. And inhaling again fully and deeply through the nose. And exhaling. And again, inhaling as you center yourself in yourself calling upon your inner wisdom guides and asking for spirit's assistance and going for the deepest healing, clearing, and understanding that is available to you at this time. And as you continue to breathe gently and easily in and out, I want you to visualize that special place in nature, that special place that you know you can visit in your mind.
Perhaps it's in a grassy meadow with tall trees. Perhaps you're at the beach with the warm sand beneath your feet or the waves lapping at your toes. Wherever you are in nature, visualize yourself there, feeling the breeze of the air that's on your skin, the fresh air that you inhale with each, each inhalation, noticing any aromas or scents that are in the air. Right now I'm smelling pennyroyal or mountain mint as it's called. I'm hearing some blue jays, the occasional rooster. <laughs> and I won't be surprised if I have visiting turkey family. We have turkeys that are here with about eight babies that are growing up in a family of deer that walk through this savanna daily, which is pretty cool. So wherever you are in nature, in your mind's eye, bring in all of the senses. So what you're feeling on your skin with the breeze or imagining. Remember, the mind can't tell the difference between reality and a really good visualization. So in your mind's eye, I want you to visualize and imagine what the air feels like. Is it warm? Is it cool? Is it moist? Is there a breeze in your special place? What plant life and animals are around you? What plant life has aromas that you're smelling? I smell grass. I smell horse manure, cow manure. <laughs> I smell the penny royal. I smell some grass. What signs or sounds are in your special place? Do you hear birds? Do you hear goats? Sometimes I hear goats across the street. What kind of birds do you hear? I remember one time I was meditating on my special place in Topanga and there was this clicking sound that kept happening over and over again. It would like click and then click and then click. And when I opened my eyes, I discovered it was a little hummingbird and apparently I was sitting in his territory and he was trying to scare me off. It's very funny. He would fly up straight up into the air until I could hardly even see him and then he would dive bomb down towards me and go swoop as he went back up and every time he swooped down he made a little clicking sound. <laughs> Just made me chuckle and laugh because he, do you really think he was going to scare me away? Anyway, these are the sounds of nature that, uh, and the experiences in nature that heal the, the soul, you know, heal the mind, that calm down that overactive monkey mind. So in your visualization with your closed eye, think about what your skin is feeling, think about what you're smelling, think about what you would hear or see if your eyes were open. <clears throat> Think about what you would taste. Sometimes the aromas that are in the air or um, just the imagination of something like we have an apple orchard across from this oak savanna. And if I think about those apples, I can almost taste those apples. And actually, I made some really good apple butter last week. It was delicious on toasted sourdough bread. Yum. So in your special place, 
Notice how your nervous system is calming down. Notice how your overactive mind is calming down. And I want you to imprint this special place in your mind. Get familiar with all the sights and sounds and smells and touches of your special place. Because in the future, you're going to be returning here, wherever you may be, whether you're at home, whether you're traveling, whether you're hiking, whether you're sitting in a train station. I remember when I first started meditating and I learned transcendental meditation, I was living in the UK, and I would practice, um, you know, meditating, TM, tradition with my mantra sitting outdoors in the train station waiting for the train to come I lived out in the countryside and we take the train into central London every day so I'd meditate in the countryside it was a pretty empty um, train station out in Ascot um, but I also meditated in central London in the tube and that was very busy and no matter how noisy or chaotic the outside was, I could close my eyes, calm down my nervous system, my mind, and immediately access that special place. So I want you to get familiar with your special place now. Because I want you to practice being in your special place, in many different environments. At home, where you feel safe, no one's around. In your car, not driving, but parked somewhere. <laughs> um, outside, maybe in a busy shopping center. You know, practice meditating in different environments, you know, and intentionally in environments that are distracting so that you can practice accessing that special quiet place inside your mind and nervous system and heart. So now that you are in this special place, I want you to Think about what does your heart desire? What is it that you really want for your peace of mind and body? What does your soul need to feed you each day? In my session this afternoon, Megan wanted to live out outside in Long Island. She was living in New York City, very hectic. She always wanted to live, you know, closer to nature out in Long Island. I think she said Port Washington, beautiful. Still only a 30 minute commute into the city. But she put that desire on hold for so long because she was waiting for the man to show up. Well, I think after today's session and acknowledging herself because she actually took that move, after we started doing some work, some things opened up and when your heart and mind open up, when you can quiet that heart and mind and tune in, things that you need to take that next step forward in your life towards some goal that you've set for yourself gracefully shows up. I experience it all the time. You know, have a vision and an intention and take little action steps don't forget 
Manifestation is not passive. Manifesting is an action. So after you have a clear vision and you've gotten clear through meditation on what your goal is, you need to take action steps toward that. And once you start setting those things in motion, everything that you need to support that vision automatically shows up and gracefully shows up. And that's actually what I'm experiencing here at the Eco Farm. Not knowing what I'm doing at all. <laughs> Never been a farmer. Um, but I have a vision. And every day for the past, wow, three, four years, every day what shows up is exactly what I need for the next step. Because I'm also taking an action step each day leaving the doors open, proactively going out and networking, meeting people, going on farm tours, joined another chamber of commerce up in Oregon, and sharing my vision. And automatically, things keep showing up. And that's how it works. So, I want you to get in touch with your heart's desire right now. What is your vision? When you start to get a clear vision of what your heart's desire is, I want you to think about, and this is where the mind comes in, you know, getting a clear vision and then after the meditation, the mind comes in and you ask it, what action steps can I take that will bring me that much closer to my vision? And they don't have to be big action steps. Sometimes people get overwhelmed because they, they see the goal and the end and all the intricacies of things that need to happen and they overwhelm themselves with the big vision. Don't let yourself get overwhelmed by the big vision. Just keep the vision in your mind and heart and then ask your mind, what baby action steps can I take that will get me closer to that? And the mind is there to help you. The mind is there to be in service to your heart. Hmm. So sit with this for a while. When we are done with this meditation, I um, want you to get a piece of paper and a pen and write down your heart's desire and ask your mind, what action steps can I take that will help bring me closer to that vision that I have, that heartfelt desire. What action steps can I take? Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. So before we end this guided visualization and meditation, I want you to take a few more deep breaths in through your nose Exhaling fully and completely through the relaxed open mouth. Again, inhaling all the love and light and beauty that surrounds you in your special place. And exhaling any thoughts, energies, or limiting beliefs that no longer serve your highest good. Inhaling once more, breathing in the love, the light, the beauty that is always available to you, doesn't cost anything, just visualize and exhale all the energies, thoughts, limiting beliefs that no longer serve your highest good. 
And take a moment to thank your inner wisdom guides and for spirit's assistance in this little exercise today. And when you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes and um, come back. So, how was that for everyone? Wow. <laughs> you're so welcome, Dakota. Is that the same Dakota I know from Malibu? <laughs> Stacy, thank you. Yeah. So, did anyone? Does anybody want to share what their um, what their vision is, their special place, or their heart's desire? What would you like to share? Anyone? <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> God bless you. She says thank you. <laughs> yeah. You're so very welcome for that. So I think, I've never used this live um, Instagram thing before, but I noticed the two little tests that I did um, were, uh, they're on my Instagram page. Um, and so this one will also be on Heal with Kelly for a while. So I imagine that um, this will stay up for a while so that you can listen to it again at some future time, but I'm not sure. Um, so, see, so funny, I'm in my happy place on the beach. Yay! <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Uh, anybody else want to share what their happy place was? Feeling lighter in my heart and calm. That's the whole point. Calming that overactive mind, calming the nervous system, so that you can access those uh, places inside. Heart's desire, place close to parents. Oh, beautiful. Parents that are aging, yep. Okay, the park. Yep, the beach. <laughs> yeah, I love the beach too. Yep. Beautiful. So, thank you everyone um, for joining me today. Um, please listen to more. And um, if know that I do still work with people individually. If you want to work with me privately, please reach out to me in an email. Uh, my email address is my first name, Deanne, D-I-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at my business name, which is also my last name, PortiasWish.com, and that's P as in Paul, O-R-C-H-I-A-S as in Sam, and then Wish, W-I-S-H, Dot com. Also, please follow me on Instagram uh, under Diane Portia. Um, and um, I have a Facebook page as well by my full name. And if you are interested, um, you know, in my healing work, my website, which is Portia's Wish, um, has a lot of information and resources on it about healing, about healing cancer. Um, let me see, relationships, communication skills, um, holistic wellness, all that stuff. So um, check out my website. And one more thing, YouTube. I have a YouTube channel and I have a lot of different playlists on that YouTube channel. And one is, um, let me see, one is about healing, uh, cancer, um, all sorts of good resources on that. And I also have a playlist, um, oh, a fun one on travel, and, uh, and one on the eco farm. So go to the Oregon playlist if you're interested in following all of the developments that are taking place here at the Portia Holistic um, Eco Farm and Wildlife Sanctuary. And it's a place to keep abreast of what's going on up here. So you'll see when I first moved all my stuff up here three years ago or four years ago, I forget. Anyway, there's lots of stuff. And um, and what I'm doing now with all the animals that show up and the organizations that I'm working with, working with Oregon State University and um, some other environmental organizations are gonna be helping me with the ecosystems and looking forward to in the fall, uh, working with OSU, um, going to be making a food forest in the old apple orchard. So we're going to be reviving the old apple orchard 
and also keeping some habitat for wildlife and stuff and creating a food forest there. So if you are inclined uh, to learn about making a food forest and want to enroll in that class, <clears throat> it's going, you know, just stay tuned um, and there will be a class on making an, an eco or yeah, making a food forest. <laughs> All right, so thank you all for joining us. I'm going to sign off now. So um, please reach out to me and give me your feedback on this. This is my first one on live Instagram with Heal with Kelly. So thanks. Thanks, Kelly. Bye.